lovely tea of Vishal Awal. Hi, Welcome Carrie. to Tea Time today with me. Such a pleasure to have you. You're on the show today. Likewise. Thank you. All right. So your journey from then to now, you started Xerox in the year 1906 in the US. And in 1983 was the birth of Xerox India as well. So your journey from then to now as far as Xerox is concerned. Let's start off with that. Uh, Xerox, as you know, has been one of the strongest and uh, most respected brands in the world. We have been a leader in document management and uh, document technology for almost uh, half a century, if not more. We have uh, embarked upon uh, a massive uh, transformation almost 10 years back when we decided to exit out of uh, our consumer printing business right. and uh, took first steps towards a services-led uh, approach towards market uh, powered by our core technology. So I think from there we have come a long, long way. Of course, uh, technology is even more important, if not uh, equally important for us, because the technological prowess of uh, Xerox Corporation is fueling our services growth. Uh, what we have done uh, in our journey so far is uh, posting the first steps towards services like Paradigm. We went shopping uh, way back in uh, 2009 when we acquired uh, ACS. That's right. Uh, a leader in uh, business process and uh, IT outsourcing uh, services right. Right. out of U.S. Uh, it was a huge shopping check, I think almost $6 billion. You know, we're going to discuss more on that as to how you all made your transition as well and diversified your business as well. But before that, what is this new Xerox India all about? You know, we've been hearing about recalibration when it comes to your company. So what is the new Xerox all about? As I say, the new Xerox is all about a services-led services technology-driven corporation. What it means is uh, we are coming out with uh, business solutions for our markets hmm. that are delivering the outcomes that our technological prowess or our products can deliver hmm. rather than the products per se, hmm. right? Hmm. So that is something which is highly appealing to the market also hmm. because uh, it directly maps into the, the business and financial drivers of the market. Right, right. Now, easy said than done. It sounds like a very fluffy statement, but then I think we have walked the talk uh, for a long time now. We have uh, uh, been uh, uh, an acknowledged category leader in management services for a long time, as you probably know, Chatty. We have been uh, in uh, Gartner's uh, Magic Quadrant uh, leadership position in management services for five consecutive years. Absolutely. So that uh, is a testimony to our, uh, you know, the breadth of vision in MPS space as well as our uh, capability to execute that. Well, talking about testimonies, I think uh, the testimony to the fact that we're playing a game now would be a good idea for me to tee off now. Absolutely. So you are diversifying your business now from actually being a core competency of being printers and copiers to business process outsourcing and IT-led outsourcing as well. Take us through the new Xerox uh, diversification that you have. Well, as we spoke, uh, Chatty, uh, the technological prowess of cooperation continues to be extremely important for us. But then uh, uh, what we realized some time back, uh, almost uh, more than a decade back, is uh, you know, Xerox technology is not only about printing and photocopying. Xerox technology is about sharing of information. And hence, it has much more relevance to driving uh, effectiveness, driving cost efficiencies, driving productivity, driving uh, end-user customer experience for our, our customers. Hmm. And in that context, we started with a, a comprehensive document uh, management portfolio of services. Right. So as I talked about management services, that was uh, basically about optimizing the office print environment mm -hmm. in a large diversified enterprise. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it applies to all sizes of enterprises, medium and small uh, um, also included. We then branched out into something called communications and marketing services, which is all about improving the marketing logistics of uh, an enterprise. So it had basically two components. One was uh, document supply chain management. So it uh, basically allows for print procurement for all the business, marketing, and customer communication requirements of an enterprise. Right. And it had something called cross-media communication services, hmm. which is uh, all about reaching your end uh, customer hmm. in a more targeted, more personalized manner. And how does one go about that? You know, we have uh, acquired a platform called XMPI. Hmm. some time back, which uh, lends itself to personalization. Right. And via um, analytics, personalization, and via ensuring that uh, the 
the overall uh, target segment of an enterprise is clusterized in a in a good way and the targeted communications are sent to different clusters right the probability of achieving the outcome the desired outcome that gets phenomenally enhanced okay and that basically leads to a much more effective use of marketing dollars for a company okay interesting you spoke about diversification because in early 2012 globally this is you all realized that your revenues from outsourcing business and it technology led outsourcing businesses was much higher than your core competency which is actually into printing and copying now projections are showing that that is going to be true for india as well as far as xerox india is concerned how far is that true is what i would like to know and also does that mean that you all will not be focusing on your core competency which is the business of printers and copiers i think it is true that services is going to be more and more of a growth driver for revenues uh, going forward right. no doubts about right. it pretty much we saw that thing hmm. in in the global context the same phenomena will, will take shape in, uh, india. in india also going forward yeah uh, the market uh, structure in india is also fundamentally transforming from being a capex led uh, uh, market uh, phenomena to an hmm. opex driven market phenomena so hmm. so again back to the same thing the market wants the outcome that the technology and products can deliver right now in that context uh, obviously the addressable market for the future for xerox corporation in india is tilted towards services almost three fourths of the the future addressable market is uh, services led but not to say that uh, you know technology part is not important that that is also growing that is growing right. fast right. and we are making strategic investments in that business also we are expanding our channel uh, uh, network significantly to reach the nook and corner of uh, india we are uh, enhancing our reseller network we are doing a whole lot of optimization of our overall supply chain to ensure that uh, the the kind of turnaround times that the enterprises expect are uh, feasible despite the huge logistical uh, complexity of a uh, country like india we are also enhancing our uh, services reach uh, tremendously so a combination of uh, technology and services both will propel xerox india forward into the future so what is your reaction vishal when people say get me a xerox of this document and not a photocopy of this document does that hamper your positioning xerox is not supposed to be used as a verb you know xerox know. is our brand name and we are quite proud of it and we would like I've to i've grown up hearing people saying get me a xerox of this not get me a photocopy of this All I would say uh, to people is please brush up your facts please uh, try and understand that Xerox is a brand name exclusively owned by Xerox Corporation of US and let's let's respect that fact and also I would say that uh, Xerox brand is no longer uh, just limited to printing and copying and I think it's only a matter of time because we have taken concrete steps in the marketplace also to kind of uh, let uh, the target market understand our new set of competencies capabilities and claim to fame and i think uh, it's just a matter of time when the 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 message will pervade across the wider market well you spoke about competencies time now to check our competency when it comes to the game now lovely lovely oh nice look at where it's gone great nice nice Okay so the managed printing services business or the MPS business like we call is on a growth tra trajectory when it comes to India and recently there have been projections that show that MPS is a very fast growing uh, market when it comes to India as well how does Xerox plan to capitalize on an opportunity like this when it comes to the MPS business MPS is indeed uh, in India the fastest growing market in the world at this in the juncture, world in the world I think uh, the only other market that is growing as fast uh, if I remember right is uh, China. So India is growing at almost 30% compounded average uh, growth rate. CAGR 30% CAGR 30% CAGR. Of course the base right now is uh, small but right. then with that kind of growth rate it's only a matter of time before to broad base uh, yeah, it. Yeah, to broad base it. 
So uh, we are already, as you know, we are the leader in the MPS space. Uh, we have been. Are you global that, market leaders in the MPS space as of right now? Absolutely, we are the global market leaders. We are acknowledged uh, category leaders in uh, MPS space. In India, also we have uh, a lot of uh, large um, management services deployments across sectors, across industries. Some of them are really, really large, and. Uh, you know, as I said, India market, even though right now it's small, since it's growing very fast, so going forward we are even more bullish and we are developing capabilities to not only offer management services on Xerox gear, but also on, on uh, you know, multi-branded uh, uh, fleet. So that will uh, further expand our horizons mm. in terms of uh, capability to address uh, the MPS. We've already much. launched that, uh, that uh, initiative in this marketplace mm. and uh, we are Really, really where, where, do you when do you, where do your competitors stand? Everybody realizes that MPS is a fast-growing fast uh, market in India and of course everybody is trying to take a position. But as I said, in terms of uh, the breadth of our vision, in terms of our uh, capability to execute, we would like to believe that we have uh, what is truly a uh, management services, which deals with uh, the productivity enhancement, en enhancements, which deals with cost uh, savings, which deals with enhanced customer experience, which deals with uh, security, which deals with compliances, which deals with uh, a more uh, robust uh, risk management framework. So I guess uh, in that uh, context, we would like to believe that we offer a truly differentiated uh, offering to the market. So other sectors like BFSI, IT, ITES, consumer goods, uh, retail, do these look lucrative to enhance your services business in India? Well, absolutely. All of these sectors and some more look very vibrant, look very promising. Uh, uh, some of these sectors are already extremely big. For instance, the BFSI, the financial services sector, the, which I include banking, financial services right. and insurance players. Right. That is like really, really document intensive, uh, uh, you know, space, transactions heavy space. And hence that has a lot of relevance for uh, Xerox kind of uh, document management outsourcing uh, uh, services. Telecom is another example, which is again, uh, uh, you know, heavy on transactions, heavy on documents. So taken together, I would say financial services sector and telecom would constitute almost at this point of time, almost two thirds of our uh, addressable market. You know, I'm glad you mentioned telecom because I think we were talking a little earlier off camera about this as well. And I think it's a good time now to bring it up where you discuss the hockey stick curve uh, phenomena that we're seeing in this country. So back Early in the day, you saw that kind of a phenomena when it came to outsourcing in BPO, when it came to India. Then eventually, in early 2000, uh, we saw that space getting captured by telecom process outsourcing as well. So where do we stand as of right now with Xerox on that? Well, uh, I think as you rightly said, we saw in IT outsourcing a huge uptake in late 90s and early 2000s. We saw a huge uptake in telecom outsourcing, including network outsourcing and IT outsourcing in telecom space mm -hmm. in the uh, first decade of 2000. And I'm, I'm uh, you know, I, was, I had the good fortune of being uh, involved with telecom outsourcing uh, myself. Uh, when I came back from North America, my first assignment was to lead uh, an engagement with uh, one of the largest operators for outsourcing their network. And, uh, you know, we were successful in that and the uh, rest is history because that has redefined telecom uh, market space. Uh, after that, uh, outsourcing became the buzzword there. I am encouraged to see that there are pretty much similar drivers that are existing in, uh, in uh, document management uh, space also in India right now. And I would like to believe that uh, it's only a matter of time when we see a similar hockey stick phenomenon taking shape mm -hmm. in this space as well. Because, uh, like it or not, document management uh, and document related spends in, a, in an enterprise could be as high as 15% of an enterprise's total spend. That's a heck of a lot of money. That's now, the only reason why it doesn't get uh, fully noticed is because uh, of the way it is being managed. It's being managed in different pockets in the, in, in the organization. And hence, the end-to-end -end visibility is not there. That realization is fast coming in the marketplace. People are realizing that uh, via uh, having a concerted approach towards outsourcing in this space, the enterprise stands to gain a lot of uh, competitive edge in the market. And that once that phenomenon gets wider acceptance, I think I would uh, expect uh, some sort of uh, uptake in uh, outsourcing activities. It's already, the initial signs are quite encouraging. It's already happening. We have already established some really large uh, proofs uh, of uh, 
uh, concept in uh, this part of the world also. And I think it's a matter of time when others also follow the suit. Now, Vishal, earlier we were discussing about a lot of different market strategies that you are planning for the year 2013. Can you take us some of them? Well, uh, we are quite bullish on 2013. We are having done a lot of groundwork in uh, the past uh, couple right. of years towards right. our new paradigm. Right. Uh, the strategy is pretty simple uh, um, and straightforward. Uh, we have a three-pronged strategy to penetrate the market. Mm -hmm. We are uh, penetrating the market via a combination of direct sales force, mm -hmm. via our alliance-led sales, mm -hmm. and via our channels and resellers. The other thing is that, you know, in Bangalore you have a research and development center. And yes. earlier on, before Bangalore, it was the one that started off in Chennai first. But when you launched that research and development center, you all realized that you all had a bit of a problem in hiring the right kind of talent in Xerox because the amount of PhDs in computer sciences in our country, it, there was a serious dearth. Has that changed around? What is the problem with the academics when it comes to uh, uh, hiring the right kind of academic talent for your company? I would say Xerox has a huge advantage being a US based uh, corporation uh, right. and a, a multinational corporation. So uh, Xerox's uh, hunt for talent is not just limited to India, if you right. will. Right. So uh, why a combination of local talent and induction or injection of uh, globally available talent, we are able to uh, really cruise along very, very nicely. All right, so now let's shift our focus a little from market strategies to golfing strategies. How does golf help in your corporate life as well? I'm sure you gain a lot in, of in, inspiration from this game when you're at work. I think you're right because golf draws a lot of parallels with business. Right. Uh, I would say like business, golf is all about uh, tenacity, about perseverance, about common sense, about judgment, about consistency, about focus, about observation. And, and pretty much like business in golf also you deal with all the hazards and all the tough situations, right? Right. But pretty much like business, you really start having an exhilarating experience once you get good at it. Absolutely. So, and you've been playing all over the world, of course, where you started off in North America. And uh, has have you played any recent corporate championships to brag home about? Well... To be honest, I'm not much of a player now. I, I'm not very regular. Uh, but yeah, in North American days, I was quite active. Post a long and hard day's work uh, at uh, office, I used to head straight to a heated uh, indoor uh, driving range and I used to blast few balls and, you know, that used to be a good stress burster. Mm. So that's how uh, my, my kind of fascination towards the sport uh, began. And I was in business development space with a global uh, telecom uh, uh, technology and uh, service provider. And hence, I was... Uh, getting uh, involved with a whole lot of sponsored golf events so that intensified my my uh, my interest in the game i'm glad you mentioned sponsored golf tournaments because we are headed to a golf premier league as well which you're quite bullish upon you're interest you're quite excited for that to happen why so i think we all have seen uh, what spectacular uh, let's say combination of uh, entertainment and uh, sporting value ipl has delivered in cricket right right uh, golf is a sport which i believe has a lot of untapped potential, potential. in india so so and with the lot the right kind of yeah, exactly, in this country exactly so so the game will pick up i guess once the golf premier league sets in i would like to believe that and i am very bullish about that Golfers that inspire you as well. You were talking to me earlier about it. Which ones are these? And what is it about the game that really gets you going? Well, I mean, if you talk about the current crop, uh, I would say Rory McIlroy. I think he's really good. He's young. He's, uh, hmm. he's he, his passion speaks for itself, hmm. uh, uh, and I think he has a long career ahead of himself. Absolutely. So he's quite promising. If you look at the past decade, I would still go for Tiger Woods. Hmm. The kind of consistency... Well, Tiger Woods now has made his comeback into familiar territory as well in 2013. Yes, so. yes, 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 yes. And I think uh, uh, champions are champions. So I think he'll, 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 uh, he'll, he'll make his mark again. So uh, apart from Rory McIlroy and Tiger Woods, you mentioned any particular Indian? Jeev Milka Singh is good. Uh, Jyoti is good. Uh, I like them quite a lot. You know what holds more promise is your future plans. So Absolutely. what next for Vishal Awal in his career? Well, I don't know about that. Uh, I think right now I'm really enjoying what I'm doing and uh, I'm quite uh, inspired, quite motivated to 
to help uh, Xerox Corporation realize the potential of India in, in, in services space. Okay, Vishal Aman, all the best in your career going forward. Thank we wish you. you all the best for your personal career and, of course, your future with Xerox India as well. Thanks a lot, Chaddy. Thanks for joining me on nice time and taking time you. out.